What is up everybody? In this video, we're gonna be talking about your worst shoes of 2021. Hey, what is up guys? And welcome back to the channel. How are you doing people? Let me know in the comments. And you know what? I love you guys. Why? Well, I put out a video a couple of weeks ago, which I said was my worst shoe of 2021. And I asked uh, in that video for your worst shoe of 2021 or your sort of worst shoe that you don't wear, uh, you've not got on with, you've bought and it was just a complete epic failure. And you guys responded in mass. Uh, I mean, I had Instagram comments, uh, obviously comments on the video, people emailing me, loads of stuff. It was epic and I really do appreciate it. I love you guys. So I thought, you know what? We're gonna put all that together into a video and to sort of summarize it, but also hopefully try and get a little bit more engagement from some of maybe some of the people who didn't see the video and find out which shoes didn't work for them as well. And yeah, it just gives a bit of feedback out there to other sort of people who like running shoes like me and you. Um, and yeah, just share a bit of, uh, I don't know, running shoe moans and groans. Okay, so how this is gonna work, we're gonna go through the sort of top uh, five or six shoes that got the most comments, most hates, most dislikes, and that kind of stuff. Now these are shoes from you know this year, last year, that kind of thing. Um, and some of them are, are specific, some of them are not specific in terms of model as well. Um, but it was really interesting reading some of the comments uh, that you guys put out, so I do love you guys. Um, but the first shoe actually wasn't really much of a surprise. Right, so I'm gonna put up a comment or, or somebody's view uh, for most of these shoes and I'll put it up somewhere um, just so you can see some of the responses we've got from the first video that I did. Um, and again, I'd love to see uh, and hear what you think about some of these choices. It doesn't mean it's right, it doesn't mean it's wrong. Some of these shoes you're gonna absolutely love and you would have gotten really well, it's all opinion after all. But the first shoe was the Nike Pegasus 37, not 38. The 37 was probably the most hated uh, shoe in terms of comments that we've got everybody moaned about it um, too narrow um, too heavy not responsive enough um, badly made heel slippage uh, price when it came out and just overall feedback on the Nike Pegasus 37 now to give you my 10 pence worth which I'm going to do on most of these shoes um, I actually agree with you um, when I first got the shoe, it seemed okay, but the more I ran in it, the worse it got. I got the heel slippage, I got the bad feel all about it. It was so badly made. Um, it just came up really, really narrow, and it was just an absolute disaster. Now, they did sort of get a little bit back on track with the 38, uh, in fairness to Nike. Um, but I think with the Nike Pegasus shoe, and I've seen this from some of the comments from some of my videos about the Nike Pegasus, Nike really need to sort themselves out in terms of daily trainer because the Nike Pegasus needs a massive overhaul. I think I say the 38 was okay, but they really need to up their game and change it. Look what all the other brands are doing, Nike, and look how awesome they're doing in terms of daily trainers and try and come up with something new for the old Nike Pegasus. Right, while we're talking about Nike, the next shoe that seemed to disappoint was the Nike Invincible, the Zoom X Invincible. Now that was a shoe that got me injured, uh, so the least said about that, the better. But that was a huge disappointment from what I've seen. Now again, some of you guys absolutely loved it and I appreciate that, and all these shoes, <laughs> some of you people will love, right? But this is opinion. Um, but the comments again were unstable, badly fitting, badly made, um, just didn't live up to the hype, all that kind of stuff, which I think, you know, I can kind of understand. Um, it was a very, very hype shoe. I know our shoe tubers don't help in that respect, um, but it was a hype shoe. But it just seems that that didn't hit the spot uh, for a lot of you guys out there. I, I saw actually two people running it the other day, husband and wife. Um, and I did ask them, I said, how are you getting on with that? And they went, mm, it's all right. Um, it wasn't our best purchase. And that just seems to be the feeling because it wasn't a really expensive shoe as well. And I think that was sort of half the problem with it. Right, next up was the Hoka Carbon X2, uh, which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, but this was a shoe that people just didn't seem to get on with. And also um, kind of left them a little bit, mm, is that it kind of thing. Now the Carbon X, uh, and the Common X2, um, I thought they were actually all right. Um, they weren't too bad, it was quite narrow, but yeah, it was all right. But the problem I think with the Carbon X2, and this is, I think, some of the issues, 
is the fact that the socket endorphin speed is just so good. Um, and the pro as well. So I don't, I think your, your Hoka have come up against an amazing shoe and shoes in the endorphin line. And I think that's the problem with the Carbon X2. Um, and actually it will lead on to another shoe, which we'll do next. Now I'm talking about this, is the fact that the Socony shoes are so good that actually they make like the Carbon X2 and some of the other carbon plated shoes out there look a little bit like, mm, is that it kind of thing. And it was kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting the Carbon X2 to be on the list, to be honest with you. But yeah, it did seem to be like quite a few of you out there were left um, sort of a little bit disappointed with that one. Right, so leading on from that is the Nike Next Percent Tempo. Now, I, I, I'm expecting to get hammered about this one because I know there are huge fans of that shoe, right? But... I did notice there were quite a few comments and quite a few people saying that actually they didn't like it. Me personally, if you've seen the video, I thought it was an absolute terrible shoe. It made so much noise when running along with it and it just didn't do anything for me at all in the slightest. Again, I go back to what I just said about two seconds ago. The problem that shoe had and has is it's going up against the sock and the endorphin line and they are much better shoes, like much, much, much better shoes. Um, I just think, again, with, with with the Nike shoes, apart from the Vaporfly, right, and the Alphafly, the rest of the shoes, really, in terms of road shoes, by the way, because I like the Pegasus Trail Free, I just think Nike have lost their way a little bit. I just, I don't know, there's, there's nothing coming out of Nike. Let me know in the comments, and I'm sure you will, what other shoes out there really are hitting the mark from, from, from Nike versus the competition that's out there? The Windflow, it's an awful shoe. Um, the Vomero 16, I mean, it's a terrible looking shoe and it's, it, it's nothing to it. Um, the Pegasus we spoke about, the Next Percent Tempo, <laughs> is that it? Um, I don't know. And this is not an anti-Nike video, people. This is driven by your comments and, and your posts about which shoes haven't worked for you uh, and you just not got on with. But yeah, I don't know. It's another one of those from Nike that just was a bit like, <sighs> is that it? The next shoe was a bit of a surprise. Uh, the Gel Nimbus, the latest model. Now, I think it's on 23. I might be wrong. Now, as you know, I'm a huge Asics fan. Huge Asics fan. Um, but the Gel Nimbus didn't seem to go down very well. Clunky, overweight, boring, uh, stiff. What was other than the other stuff with it? I don't know. Hot. That was it. Hot. So, again, Asics, which have made some unbelievable shoes of late. Now, uh, Nova Blast 2 over there, not for me. Um, watch my gate analysis video. But you guys are loving the Nova Blast. Oh, it's over there, yeah, we've got the Meta Sky Speed, or it's Meta Speed Sky, I know someone pulled me up on that the other day. But yeah, we've got that over there as well, fantastic shoe. Um, and Asics just makes some great, great shoes. But the Gel Nimbus shoe, you don't seem to like. Personally, I would send you to the Gel Nimbus Lite 2, um, which I know has been difficult to get hold of, but that is a much, much better shoe than the Gel Nimbus. But yeah, you guys are not digging the old Gel Nimbus lately. Now, the last shoe on this hit list of shoes that you just didn't like or you didn't get on with or a massive disappointment was the New Balance 1080 version 10 and 11. Now, I found this kind of interesting, actually, uh, because the New Balance 1080 was a popular shoe. But there was a lot of feedback on that shoe in terms of negativity towards it. And one of the interesting things I found about that shoe, and this is quite common, it seems, well, quite common, maybe like three people said it, um, but their toes were going numb in it. Now, that can be down to lacing, um, but I've seen a couple of comments about that, and actually one of my runners has said the same thing about the New Balance 1080, was the fact that her um, toes went, or one of her toes went numb in it. Now, let me know in the comments. I'll be very interested to know. They, they seem to, with the 11, have not sort of improved it enough for you guys to really dig it. But I was quite surprised, actually, how, how many people weren't loving the 1080 version, 10 version 11, because you do see a lot of people running in them. Um, so I was a bit surprised about that, actually. So I'd be really interested to know if you're feeling the same about the New Balance, the New Balance 1080 um, version 10 version 11. Let me know in the comments uh, about that shoe as well. So they're kind of like six of your, it's a bit strong, but most hated shoes of late. Um, let me know in the comments any others that we, you sort of, you're just not feeling. Uh, the video, original video to this was about the A6 Magic Speed. And it wasn't that I hated the shoe. Um, it was the fact of, I couldn't find a place in my rotation for it. Um, it wasn't good enough 
to do tempo working. It wasn't good enough to be a daily trainer. I couldn't use it as a racing shoe because it's got a carbon plate in it. It just, it was just a shoe that was, I don't know. And I, I, Asics, I think, made it to do like a budget carbon plate shoe and, and mad love to them for trying that. But I don't know, it just didn't hit the spot, especially because you've got the Evo ride and then you've got like the, the meta stuff um, coming out from them. Um, so yeah, it was a funny shoe and that's what drove the video uh, originally. I had to think about it, what other kind of shoes um, have missed the mark for me. And I've got a couple others to add to the list. Okay, so the other three shoes that really, I just think, oh, okay. Um, and one of them's really gonna surprise you, okay? So stay with me. Firstly is the Vomero. The 16, 15, just a pointless shoe. Um, I just, I mentioned it in the video of the 16. I just, I just can't see the point of it anymore. It makes no sense to me. There's nothing there for me that makes any logical sense. So that is a dog walking shoe now, okay? The next shoe um, is the Socony Endorphin Shift. Now I've not bothered getting version two because the first version was just a bit pointless. I mean, why would you buy the shift? It was cumbersome. I'd just rather buy the speed. Uh, it made no sense to me um, in the end for that shoe. Uh, I, I don't know. I said, obviously a lot of people did buy it, but no, it was it was a bit of a, a bit of a dud, the shift. Um, and in, especially now when you compare it to like the Clifton 8 and obviously my favorite Sketches Max Road 5, there's no way that I would get the shift too. Um, and the other shoe, which is really going to surprise some of you, is the next percent too. Yeah. I know, you're going to think I'm mad. There is nothing wrong with that shoe. I think, still, it is the fastest shoe out there, right? So I am contradicting myself. But uh, what the point of this video is also about shoes that I'm just not wearing. And I don't know whether it's a lack of races or whatever, but I just haven't found myself. I've done, I think, one race in the shoe now. Uh, I've done a couple of training runs in it, and that's it. Um, and it's, you know, it's quite a trumpy shoe. I just seem to be always going for the shift or the pro from, from Socony, uh, when I've got, when I've had events, uh, and looking forward to the events that I've got for the rest of the year, I can't see really where I would wear it. Um, the only one I was kind of thinking, I've got a London half marathon coming up, um, in September, but that's a bit twisty and a bit windy. So with the instability, I'm not sure I would wear it then. So do you see what I mean? It's, it's a shoe that is fantastic. It is the best shoe in terms of out and out speed. There's a reason why all the elites wear it and all that sort of stuff. And, and it's, it is amazing. But for me, I'm just struggling to, to wear it. Um, because for marathons, as I've said in the video, if you've not seen it, I've got the ASICs and I've got the, where are they? The Alpha Fly for me, for, for marathon distance. Half marathon distance, I'm, I'm in the Socony Pro or the Socony Shift um, in terms of the half marathon at the moment. 10K, I'm in my sketches um, because they're just awesome. Or even the um, Meta Racer from Asics. 5K, part run, I'm, I, you know, to be honest with you, I've been in the sketches, they're up there, but the sketches, I've been wearing those part run because they're just a maniac on your feet. I mean, they're a fantastic shirt. I mean, I wore it for a Cooper test. I wore it for a speed test. Uh, I've worn it for other stuff, you know, miles that I've done in terms of trying to set records and that. And it is just an unbelievable shoe. But I just haven't found myself wearing it. So there you go. Let me know. I'd be really interested to get all your feedback. And, and send it in. You know, we can talk about it on the Long Run Podcast. If you've not seen that uh, yet, check that out. It's on Spotify. Uh, free to download, free to view, um, whatever. We do it live at seven o'clock UK time. Um, email in, um, and I'll put the email address along here, and, and, it's, uh, you know, and, I'll, and I'll talk about it on the um, on the long run podcast about shoes that maybe you're just not wearing for whatever reason. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's a bizarre topic. I was to say, it's really taken aback by you guys. So much engagement around the topic. It was quite interesting um, because it was a video I kind of done, almost tongue in cheek in a way. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's it. Super interested, but again, mad love to you guys for giving me all that feedback.